I don't know, darling. It's one of those virtual interweb DVD things. What? Oh, I've got no idea what it stands for, no. No idea. Now, where were we? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Right, I got to go. Uh, speak to you later, darling. Uh, don't forget to park the car in the drive! Hello, I'm Brian Blessed. Welcome to the documentary that is about Wobble and Bob. It's the documentary that is about Everyone in the world knows about Wobble. Hi, I'm John Picking, and I'm the creator of Wobble and Bob, along with uh, my co-writer, Scoo. So, John, who are these funny little fellows? Wobble and Bob are friends, and they've known each other from way back. Weeble is Wobble's dad. Wobble loves Donkey, but Donkey is married to Chris Ninja Pirate. Jams like Wobble. But Wobble doesn't like them. The mysterious chicken, we suspect he's in league with somebody, but we're not sure who. Angry Paul is Bob's son. Angry Pierre is Bob's cousin. Harry Lee is an old friend of Wobble and Bob. Monkey, it was a free gift with a cleaner. Hand boy, he's a bit handy, yeah. I'm from uh, Doncaster originally. I did go to art college and was told that I wasn't a fine artist. Stopped messing around with music. We had a bit of interest from record companies way back. There wasn't much money in what we were doing. Songs about fish, mainly. Went off to Barnsley Music College. Then I did music for TV for a bit. And then I started doing little websites for the music. And around 2000, I moved down to London to uh, get in on the sort of web act. So I was sat around most of the time, just faffing around, doing just silly little animations and bits of Flash. What? Flash, Gordon? N not really, no. Yeah, my early animations were appalling. I used to sit in, around in my room drawing little spaceships and then scribbling them out and stuff, so I always find it quite frustrating, really, working on paper. What do you want? I did lots of other animations before I started on Wobble and Bob. Um, sort of drew some weird basic shapes and took bits and bobs and bobs and bobs away until I got something that I was liking. I really didn't know where I was going with it, it just sort of fell into place really. And uh, as a result of that, Wobble and Bob came about really. So there we go, there was the first animation. I put a tune online straight away with the initial Pi episode and over the next four days I did another three and then ideas started slowing down obviously and I was thinking mm, I could do a bit of help on the writing side of things. School is on his way to London to record the director's commentary for this DVD. Luckily, we have a camera on the train. Amazing thing, really, television. <coughs> I started off as a fan, uh, posting on the uh, uh, internet forums. So I asked around on the forums. John T came on and he was looking for someone to help out with uh, coming up with ideas and perhaps helping with animating. And Scoo's name sort of was top of the list. Do you like Scoo? I don't know what Scoo is. No. Nervous, I've never written a script before. I uh, went away, came up with an idea, put this whole script thing together. And uh, I was quite happy with it. And I presented it to him. He, he said, yeah, that's good, that's good. But I'm not going to use it. <laughs> About a week later, and he was stuck. He you know, asked me for ideas, I gave him ideas to use them, and um, my name was in the credits. And from then on, I've helped with pretty much every episode. Although Jaunty and School have produced almost 50 episodes of Wobble and Bob together, they have only ever met a handful of times actually in the flash. Oh, sorry, in the flesh. We will leave them here as they have a busy day ahead of them tomorrow. Saturday morning and the boys are ready for action. Impetuous boys. I think the main moment when it really clicked was when I was playing a computer game online. 
this game lets you actually speak into a microphone so you can hear what people are saying. And everyone was just running around shouting pie. Pie! Let's talk about the pie. Yes, let's talk about the pie. Pi is an irrational number. It cannot be written as the ratio of two integers. In fact, the number is transcendental. This means that there is no polynomial with rational coefficient of which pi is a root. I'm full and happy, actually. Very happy. Beef is the biggest selling pie. People love pies like I do. Everyone loves a pie. Lamb and rosemary is a fantastic pie. I love seeing people eat pies and we love making pies and we're going to, we plan to grow and, and become a, a pie. We do apple pie, cherry pie, on your pie. Did approach them, approach Chonty about doing a, a, a square wobble. Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, I don't think it's going to happen. But squares don't wobble. Yeah, they don't wobble at all. Art for pie! Half the problem with why I never got into fine art is um, I just kind of drew the finish thing straight off without any preparation work. Re-energised and full of pie, we're off to sell some art in fashionable East London. Yeah. Here's artist Dickon Swan. In the sculptures of Brancusi, for instance, he makes all his forms incredibly simple, and one of his major themes is the theme of the, the egg. We showed Wobble and Bob to Dickon. In a way, this this is this is Brancusi with a uh, with a twist. It's never going to be over. What's going on, boys? They rejected his work, and as you can see, he's quite moved. So uh, we're thinking about trying some other galleries. Yeah, that's right, mate. We'll, we'll try other galleries. Magnus Hamster, he's, he's laying down the law, you can tell. Look, he's like his little sheriff badge and his eyes that see all. They only seem to want things that are done on canvas or sculptory twat, jizz, monkey, spanner. Hey, you may have seen his previous work in American. Putting the morning's disappointment behind them, the boys prepare for their director's commentary. But before that, they have agreed to answer a few questions posted by fans on the website, but with one condition, that their own choice of pie is on the table with them. So boys, how do you work together? Chauncey will come up with an idea, and quite often I'll have to tell him it's crap. Not that, that often. I was just, you know, Every now and then. Occasionally. All right, once. Okay. Great. There's no real formula to it. It's uh, pretty much whenever. The first time that we're actually going to work on an episode together is this weekend. We're going to record some voices. But other than that, everything's done online. I'll go, hey, school, what are you doing? And you'll go, I don't know where you are. I'm typing this. And I'll go, OK, let's type this somewhere else. And we'll go off into a little private room. So who does the voices? Me mainly, I do most of the main characters. <laughs> um, and Scoo will do the voice that you can understand. Man, do you have hair? And the million dollar question, who are Wobble and Bob? I'm Wobble. I was already Scoo. You can be Bob. Bob, Bob's Bob. So does Bob exist? No one else Bob, Bob, you can Bob. actually email Bob, Bob exists. Yeah, Bob exists. Well, I'm glad we got that sorted out. Tell us about Bob's week in France. We're going to release an episode a every day. day for a week. And we got four episodes in and just realised it was far too much work. School made a little animation specially to sort of say sorry. This is Walking with Dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's going to be on the DVD. No, it is. Is it? No, oh. it is. Okay, check it out. My favourite character is Chris. Ah, uh, he's going to the Priory. Oh, really? Who, Chris? Chris, yeah. Really? After a binge. Hello, my name's Dr Nick Cooling. I'm a consultant psychiatrist at the Priory Hospital in Roehampton. 
From a psychological perspective, I think it's very interesting when people become fixated or obsessed with eggs. Bob! Wobble. Shoe. Boys! Girls. You put me on a... <laughs> You've said the only possible answer. Men who are repressed homosexuals may develop a fixation on eggs uh, because of their resemblance to the male testis. Men. No, ah. Oh. <laughs> Geek. Heaven. Nerd. It is a symbol of masculinity, uh, but it's also a symbol of femininity. I mean, eggs are used for everything. Eggs are used to represent breasts as well, and, uh, and you know, buttocks. Orange. Yesterday. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's probably something of me on the screen I would have said. It's probably me when I'm a bit tipsy, right, really. I get quite shouty and incoherent. Sometimes the people cook pastry. A beer is always a good start to a holiday, I think. So, yeah. as they start their commentary, oh, we I leave the boys to, to the it, but not without a few passing thoughts like on the future. We didn't even know each other before Wobble and Bob. No, and I didn't think it would ever be on TV or anything like that. We actually met whilst outside Johnny Picking's house. The time I signed a lady's breast was kind of making you feel kind of celebrity. -ish. Have you been recognised? I've been recognised. Have you? Yeah, two little kids ran up one day after an England football match and went, it's Wayne Rooney. Eh? It's quite awkward to tell another man how you feel about him uh, without coming across as maybe too effeminate. I just wanted to do something as good. I, I do respect the man, and uh, I do think we make a good team. I don't think about money. I would like uh, a pay increase. There's never really been a huge plan of what to do next or anything. I still part of me wants to have a squirrel. Just, I, I can just visualize a squirrel gnawing on Bob's head. And finally, as the sun sets in the west, we bid a fond farewell and leave you with just one vision of an ovoid future. Be one hell of a planet you boys come from. You could not be down with the Hawkman feather. You loony bird, you're needed on the ground. Imagine Flash Gordon calling me a loony bird. Mind you, uh, I am a bird, and birds do lay eggs. We lay lots of eggs. <laughs> I just laid one. <laughs> They never asked me to do boss nass. Here's boss nass. Ah!